Oh my god. I've been talking and talking. My mic was not. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Alright, I'm gonna start again. That's so embarrassing. Whoops. Hi. <laughs> I've been talking for the last five minutes and you haven't heard anything. Okay, cool. Um, so, hey, how's it going? My name's Alfalfa. Um, let's just pretend that I did that right the first time. <laughs> oh, technical difficulties. I forgot to unmute my mic. Okay. Uh, so, hi. Um, we're going to be looking at Shadow Temple today. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your patience. Um, so, I'll, I'll say everything I said again and try to be patient going through it again because it was all worth saying, I think. Um, so yeah, we're going to be looking at Shadow Temple today, and Shadow is a really interesting dungeon um, on account of all of the different ways that you can save small amounts of time going through it. Uh, hi, welcome Scrubs. I hope that this is a very useful lesson for helping you to save some time here. Um, get better at this temple. It's very execution heavy, and there's lots of little things you can do uh, to save time that add up over the course of the dungeon. Uh, definitely I've seen in a lot of races where runners are going into Shadow around the same time, but one of them will come out one or two or three minutes ahead of the other it's all down to, to execution so this is definitely a dungeon where it's worthwhile putting in some practice to get good uh, the first thing to notice here is our spawn point so of course in scrubs season three and in, in a lot of races these days uh, random spawns random ages on and this is one possible place where you can spawn uh, you can spawn up here on the shadow warp platform so that means that Nocturne of Shadow might not be required. Uh, if this is your adult spawn, you can just get into Shadow without Nocturne. However, that's pretty rare. Most of the time, you are going to need that warp song to do the dungeon. So, I've given us uh, pretty much everything I think we might need to do this dungeon. Um, plus a couple of bonus bottles with a fairy in case we die, and some green potion in case uh, we run out of magic. I don't think we will. We got double magic, and there's tons of magic all through the temple, but you never know. Uh, the one thing I didn't give here was long shot, which is not required for Shadow, but uh, allows you to do like a couple of things a little bit faster or a little bit easier. Uh, I, I figured it would be better to just stick with hook shot because um, that's more often what you're going to have, and so learning the the harder way to do it uh, with the with the hook shot, and then if you do have the long shot, it is just a little bit simpler in a couple of places. Um, so let's uh, let's hop into the temple and of course if at any point you got any questions uh let me know i'm happy to go over things as many times as possible we'll take a look together and see what we can learn so yeah uh, you may have seen me running back and forth over this gap yeah so Dins is logically required for entry, uh, and under the rule set that for the Scrubs tournament, uh, you're not allowed to do fire arrow entry for Shadow Temple. Uh, there is a different rule set called DDR, Dungeon Door Requirements, uh, and in that rule set, you just have to open the door. It doesn't matter how you do it, you just need to light the torches. Uh, but for, for the Scrubs tournament, for the weekly races, for league races, for most pickup races, it's uh, the standard rule set, which doesn't allow f uh, fire arrow entry. I've never actually learned it. It used to be allowed, and now it's not. Uh, if they ever allow it again, I'll probably learn it. But for the Scrubs tournament, it's not worth learning. You won't be able to use it. Uh, so you may have seen me running around here with the hover boots on, and I was I was explaining what I was doing, but since you couldn't hear, uh, probably looked kind of weird. Uh, so what I was talking about was something that I've often seen beginners do with the hover boots, which is equip them and then start running. And you'll notice that from a standstill, he goes pretty slowly at first, uh, and sometimes you don't get quite enough momentum to cross the gap. So the best time to equip the hover boots is when you already have a good amount of speed, uh, and mid-roll, optimally, is, is a good place for it. So you see I'm rolling, I, whoop, I equipped and unequipped them. Uh, but like, when I press roll and then I equip them, I don't lose any speed that way. If you roll right before you leave the ground, then you've got plenty of time to roll again in mid-air. Uh, so here... I had plenty of time for a second roll, but if I roll after I leave the ground, I only get the one roll. So with this gap, it doesn't make a big difference. It's a short gap, but with longer gaps, uh, yeah, or you eat yourself off the edge. If, if you're a little bit too late equipping them, then you eat yourself off the edge. So yeah, 
Uh, I, like, I press roll and then I press boots. Uh, with, again, with this gap, not super important. It's easy enough to clear it just with, like, I think you can just, oh, you can't quite run all the way across, but just with one roll you can. Um, but with, with bigger gaps in some other areas, there's one in Forest Temple in particular I'm thinking of, it's nice to get that roll in right before you get off the edge. So it's, it's a good habit to get into. Let you move a little bit more effectively. Uh, but yeah, the, the worst time to equip hover boots is right before you start running, because he starts at this slow little shuffle at first. So definitely run and then equip, or better, roll and then equip. So we'll go into this little maze here. Uh, it's not much of a maze. I don't know what the designers were thinking. Uh, the walls that you can pass through have the little glowing eyes, and the ones that you can't pass through don't, so it's it's pretty trivial to figure out where you're going. Ah, uh, Pugo, so you're yeeting yourself off the edge, so probably what you're doing is you're equipping your boots too late. Uh, so you're rolling for the edge, and then equipping your boots when Link is already jumping. Uh, so you, you're probably going to want to press the, the hover boots just a little bit earlier. So coming into this room here, uh, this is a pretty pretty simple little room. So this enemy here, the Redead, um, he will only freeze you and attack you when you're within a certain radius of him. Uh, so from the door, if you just target and hookshot, or so not hookshot, jump slash, that's it, he's done. Uh, if you move forward at all, he might scream at you and then you freeze. So uh, the thing to do before you move, just target jump slash. Uh, there's also these two keys up here. Now, it is possible to get into this room, of course, without hookshot. Um, you can get in with the hover boots, cross that gap, and come in here. If you don't have the hookshot or the bow, uh, just tossing a, a Deku nut will, will knock these guys down really quick. Um, if you're close enough. There actually is a lot of Shadow Temple that you can do without um, the hookshot. You can do... I want to say like 10 out of the 18 checks without the hookshot. Um, so it, it definitely comes up. Uh, sometimes you find the hookshot pretty deep into shadow. So, um, so yeah, this first room, not a lot to be said about it. Just jump slash right away once you get in there. Uh, so then we're going to go right on down this hall. And now here comes the first challenging thing. This one's a fake. This is the real one. Uh, I think this is a nut drop. No, it's a magic drop. So the first challenging thing we're going to see is is this fight with Dead Hand. Um, and I, I want to do this twice. Uh, once with the Big Goron Sword and once with the Master Sword. So I'm going to draw Pharaoh's Wind in here and save. Uh, then after I beat him, I'll, I'll reset. We'll come back and fight him again with the Master Sword so we can see the difference between them. One thing that is similar, and you've probably seen if you've watched any rando races, is people will jump at these hands but not get caught by them. In order for Dead Hand to spawn, the hands need to reach out and grab you. Uh, but if they grab you, then you can't fight them very effectively. So the the way that we do this is actually really simple. Uh, it's a jump slash, but while Link is in the air, you just release target and then press it again. So it looks like that. You can see at the top and bottom of the screen, uh, it narrows a little bit like it's widescreen. You get the black bars at the top and bottom. So when I press jump slash, I let go and then press again in mid. That's all there is to that. So when you jump slash at one of these hands, you just uh, line up with it. And if you do that untargeting in midair, it's it's like it's super easy. So the trick here, you've probably seen about the power crouch stab. Because I jump slashed, when I press shield and sword, it has the same strength as a jump slash. So I'm going to do one of those, and then I'm going to charge a magic spin attack until it goes orange, and then release it. That's all there is to this with the big Goron Sword. Crouch stab, charge, and release. And he's done. One cycle. If you have the big Goron Sword, it's super easy. Uh, you just need to do the crouch stab, the, I think it's called a great spin, and uh, he goes down. Pretty easy to do with the, with the big Goron Sword. One cycle should be, like, pretty much every time once you get the hang of it. 
With the Master Sword, it's a little bit more complicated to get the one cycle. It's still possible, uh, but the timing is very precise. I miss it, like, I would say probably half the time. Uh, there is also, though, a very consistent strategy for a two-cycle fight. So, exact same thing. We're going to do this target-untarget thing, and that allows you to not get grabbed by the hands. Um, with Dead Hand, his behavior is based on how much damage he has. So if we do two of these crouch stabs on him, in the second cycle, he'll, his health, health will be too low and he'll very quickly retreat underground. So the strategy for the quick two cycle here is we want to do one crouch stab and then just a slash. Uh, so not holding target, not holding shield, just pressing the sword button. That puts his health at just the right level so that in the second cycle we can do the two uh, crouch stabs and knock him out. Uh, so again, it's like we jump slash in, crouch stab slash, and then he goes back underground. Jump slash in again, and then two crouch stabs. That's, that's the strat with the Master Sword. There is a way to do it just in one cycle. Uh, I'll, I'll try to do it after this and we'll see. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll be satisfied with the two cycle. So you want to get like away from the hand so they don't grab you. Crouch stab, slash. So now he'll go back underground. Won't take him too long. We'll do this again. And now his health is at the right level that he'll allow us to hit him twice. And down he goes. So we'll try one more time, and I'll, I'll try to get the one cycle. I can't guarantee that I can get it. Uh, the thing about the one cycle is it's very timing based, and it's also kind of position based. Uh, you need to do another jump slash attack at him right before he goes back into the ground. There's a narrow window. Like, it's not frame perfect, but it's, it's a small window. Uh, oh, I'm gonna need the master sword again. It's a small window. And if he's close to one of these hands, they might grab you as well. So it's it's not as easy to do. So we'll see if I can get it. Oops. Oh man, I, now I can't even get this part. Alright, so I got caught. So we want him away from the hands. And like moving away from them. Approach him, slash him. He's walking away. And right about there. There we go. I got him. So it's the timing is like his left arm jiggles out from his body a little bit and then he goes back into the ground. It's when his left arm is coming up is when I jump slash at him. But it's it's also based on how far away you are from him. Uh, like I said, I fail that like probably about half the time. Uh, the good news is, though, that the strategy for the one cycle and the two cycle are exactly the same. You want to start with the, the crouch stab and then the slash, and then he's going back under the ground. So it doesn't cost you anything to try for the, for the quick kill one cycle. Uh, if you miss, you still are set up for a fast two cycle. The initial hit. All right, yeah, so that's, I, I think that's one of the trickiest things to get a hang of. Uh, so we'll, we'll give that just one more look. So, Poogle, are you talking about, um, like, jump slashing at the hands to get him to spawn, or are you talking about the, the first crouch stab on him? The trick with this is, so, I'm gonna press A, let go of target, and then press target while he's all, all while he's in mid-air. So it's just a fast release of target. So look at this. And you also want to be, like, pretty lined up with the hand. Yeah, yeah, that's right, so... Yeah. Oops. Yeah, so I store the jump slash by by jumping at the thing, and then, yeah, it's just a crouch stab. Yeah, so the first hit on him is a crouch stab, uh, regardless of if you're using the Master Sword, the Big Goron Sword. Uh, yeah. You don't want to be jump slashing at him. Sometimes as a child in uh, Bottom of the Well, like if you don't have a shield um, yeah, and you're fighting him and you're trying to do all these jump slashes, it's the most pain in the ass kind of fight. That dead hand fight without a shield is just miserable. Um, so yeah, that's that's two ways to do dead hand. Um, it, it is a fight that does get easier with practice. Definitely like 
it's it's worth uh, worth doing like four or five times, like seeing if you can get the hang of it. Uh, if you don't have magic, Tanjo, then you can't get into the temple. Like, you're 100% of the time you're going to have magic in Shadow Temple. Uh, unless it's, um, yeah, you need magic. Unless it's, um, what's it called? Uh, like, entrance randomized, if the dungeons are randomized. But in scrub settings, yeah, you're always going to have magic in here. Yeah. So coming out of here, uh, just go straight. This maze isn't much of a maze. Come around the corner here. So we got here uh, the Truth Spinner, or the Spinner of Truth, or whatever it's called. Um, so you may or may not know that two of these skulls are dummies. Uh, this one here and this one here are never, never correct. Uh, they're always going to be the wrong answer. This one here is the most likely to be correct. It's 44.4% of the time. Uh, this one's 22.2%. And this one over here, 33.3%. I don't know why they're not, like, one-third each. That's just the way they programmed it. Uh, but the result is that this one is the right answer almost half the time. So if you don't want to stop and equip the Lens of Truth, uh, the thing to do is to equip your hover boots and pull it to the second one here. And almost half the time, that's going to be the right answer, like in this case. Uh, I'll just show you quickly. Oh, I can't even. It won't let me. Uh, if it's the wrong answer, uh, when you let go, you have plenty of time with the hover boots to run off. Um, like, it's, it's not close. You got t tons of time there. So you may have seen there, I started rolling right before I reached the edge. And that lets you get a second roll in. If you do it the other way, then you have to, a lot of the time, you'll have to, like, grab at the edge. And that's just a little bit slower climbing up. So, right before you reach the edge, roll, and you got time for that second roll there. Alright, so I'm gonna need bombs. So this is a long hallway. I back walk down. And I, I'm watching the mini-map here, actually. Uh, see the yellow triangle is Link's position. When it reaches about here, I pull a bomb. And then it's ready to blow pretty much as soon as I get to that wall there. Uh, there. There's other ways to do that, that's just the way I do it. Um, and then I prefer to do this compass room first. I like to have my sword out going in here. So these are different from uh, the Redeads we saw before. These ones are called Gibdos, and there's... Uh, the, the biggest difference in their behavior is that if there are two Redeads in a room and you kill one of them, the other one is harmless. It's gonna start walking towards its buddy. It won't attack you even if you walk right in front of it. Uh, it pretty much starts ignoring you. Uh, when there's two Gibdos in a room though, they don't care about each other. You kill one, the other one's just as dangerous as before. Um, and again, they're looking ahead of them. The fastest way to get these guys is to like hold up left and then jump slash. Uh, sometimes though, they'll still scream. Uh, so the safer strategy, if you find you're consistently getting caught, is to come and get them from behind. They won't scream at you when you're behind them, usually. Uh, so that, that's a little bit safer, but faster is just uh, immediately in the room. You're holding up left, and then you jump slash at them. Alright, so if you have been paying attention so far, you probably know what is in the next chest that we're going to open. Uh, you can drop your guess in the chat if you have one. So this is the first of the silver rupee puzzles. I think there's three silver rupee puzzles in here. Um, and it's just all about, like, quick movement. You just, those, uh, those spinning blades, you can just roll right under them. Also, they only do, I think, a, yeah, a quarter heart damage, so it's nothing too serious. With this one up here, um, Uh, so, if, uh, this might help you out. The next door that we go through is locked. Uh, that might help you out with a guess. With this one up here, I see sometimes people, like, trying to aim very precisely. You don't need to aim very high on this thing. Look, I'm gonna aim here, and I can still climb up. Like, it's not hard to climb up here, so don't, don't spend any time aiming at this thing. Uh, you're coming out of here, you pull out your hookshot, oh. Do doesn't matter where you hit it. You're going to make it to the top. Also, don't worry about lining up grabbing this silver rupee. 
Yeah, yeah, you can shoot the side of this thing. Yeah, the target is completely useless. I don't know why they even put it there. Uh, also, from coming from the top here, don't worry about lining up at the silver rupee. You can't miss jumping off. Like, I just aim, get up, and then hold down, and you get the silver rupee. Um, it's also possible that you're here without uh, the hookshot. So you can get up here without the hookshot uh, using the hover boots from the top of this thing here. The timing is important because that blade will knock you out of midair if you're running with the hover boots. So you want to do it after the blade is passing. You don't even need to roll. You just hold in the direction of it and you can climb up there like that. And that is in logic. Um, so the logical requirements for getting that rupee are either hookshot or hover boots. You can also ground jump up there, but if you're here, you have the hover boots, so uh, not really worth it. So we come over here, and this is, of course, a key. One of the first four chests is always a key. You can get more than one key, but always you're going to get at least one. Um... I don't know if this is actually faster. I saw ATZ doing this way back in Season 2, and I've always just done it the same way. Just back walking out, side hopping over, and then back flipping over this thing. I don't know if it's faster. Looks fast enough. I've never actually timed it. Uh, so we're going to take our key. We're going to go down this hall. And there's three uh, giant skulltillers that drop from the ceiling. So normally for me, when I come into the temple, these are the things I've equipped. The hookshot, the bombs, the din's fire. Uh, and I haven't had any reason to change those equips up until now normally. So I'll usually uh, kill these three skulls with din's fire. It's a little bit slower than using a deku nut. You can also drop a deku nut at exactly the same place. Uh, that's a little bit faster, but it's, it saves you a pause. And then... Going through this next area, you can just side hop. Oh, sometimes, depending on where this guillotine blade is, you can just side hop. Don't bother killing this guy. Uh, you can just roll right past him. He starts from way up, like way up there, and you got plenty of time to just roll past him or side hop past him. So I'm going to void out, and we'll uh, we'll go through that room again with, uh, with Deku Nuts this time. Why not? So you want to be with the Deku Nuts, you want to be against the wall, against the right wall there. Uh, otherwise, it'll miss the two on the other side. Oh, and even still, I didn't hit that guy. Uh-oh, am I stuck? I think I'm stuck. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm literally stuck. All right, so that's that's why I don't... Um, I don't do the nut strat. I prefer the the dins fire because you know it's gonna <laughs> you know it's gonna work. Um, okay, so I think that I have to do that silver rupee puzzle again. I don't have a key. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So I I really I like the din strat there. Like magic isn't an issue in this temple. So many of the enemies drop magic. There's so many pots with magic in them. So. Alright, so you can see there, that was the wrong choice this time. It's okay. This is probably going to be wrong as well. Oh, it was right. The one in five chance. Alright, we'll do that silver rupee puzzle again. Just nice and quick. And we'll carry on with our lives. Yeah, that's not even the first time that's happened to me. <laughs> And like I said, you can just hold down. You don't need to line anything up. And I like to sort of hug the walls here. Uh, you don't take any damage. If you're side hopping, you might get knocked over by that blade. Uh, but not if you're hugging the walls. So, yeah, so the bomb can despawn. Uh, yeah, so if, if you drop a bomb here, and then you go, like, over here, it might not blow up the wall. 
uh, it, you need to be still, I think, in this same area. You don't necessarily need to be looking at it, but I think if you go through either of those little invisible walls, uh, maybe the bomb despawns. There's a similar thing that happens in Dodongo's Cavern, uh, where I'll drop a bomb in front of the wall that has the Gossip Stone, and then go to hit the switch, and it just it won't blow up the wall. So, yeah, it's, I think it's a proximity thing. That's why I like to do it as I'm coming into the room. I, I know, like, a consistent spot to pull the bomb out uh, so that it'll blow up while I'm right by the wall. So that's that's the way I prefer to do it. More consistent there. And then here... Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that happens. But optimally, you can just quickly side hop all the way through there. And now, we're in this room. So... These things really suck to get hit by. Oh yeah, there's a there's a wall master or floor master or something. Uh, if you think you might get hit, then stop because if it knocks you off, it's gonna cost you like a minute to get back here. So it's better to take the extra like two seconds. Oh my gosh, yeah, like that. Um, however, I do find pretty often the best way to do it is to just go. Things line up pretty well if you're just moving quickly and confidently through. So in that case, I was like, oh, well, is it safe? Is it safe? And then by waiting, I sort of screwed myself over. Uh, so this time, I'm just going to go for it. Man, I just can't get this today. But if you just sort of like, I'm going, I'm going... Everything just sort of seems to line up. Now with these platforms here, I'll show you, now that we're past them, you can't miss them. Like, they're, they're exactly where you think they're going to be. There really isn't much of a way that you could fall off. You just, you turn left and you go straight, you turn left and you go straight. It's, uh, it's hard to mess up. What I see some people doing is they'll cut this corner, they'll go over to this one. It's faster by like a second. Uh, the problem is that if you fall off, then you're all the way back up at the top of the stairs with the with the falling skulltulas. Even if you miss it like one time out of 20, that's still like, it's such a pain to come all the way down. So I, I don't bother cutting that corner. You do you. If you want to cut it, that's fine. But I, I don't recommend it. In this room, I use a slower strategy than, than a lot of runners. The fast thing to do is to use the bow. Uh, I got hit by this guy. To use the bow first to shoot uh, the like like, and you shoot that one, that one, and that one. It depends on you being able to aim the bow really well. Uh, many of you know I play on keyboard. I can't aim very well, so I come over and I kill them with the hook shot instead. Uh, if you do it like me, my warning is don't get too close to the keys. Uh, if I get any closer than this, he's going to start flying, and then it'll be harder to hit him. So you do want to do it from a little bit of a distance. Uh, don't get too close. For the like leg, uh, you can hookshot him, and it stuns him. That way he won't eat you, and then you can just crouch stab him. And of course this room has an invisible chest over here. Yeah, Tanjo, do you play on keyboard as well? Or am I the only one? Yeah, I've been playing on keyboard for for a number of years. Um, like, even before I started playing rando, I was playing um, uh, an entrance randomizer called Beta Quest on keyboard. It has its drawbacks, but honestly, like, I've been doing it for so long, it's just the most comfortable thing for me. So, coming out of here, we got two options. Uh, if I'd come out right away and started moving, this would have lined up really well for me to take this, wait for it to raise, and then come over. That is the slower way by a couple of seconds. I'm going to show you the faster way, uh, which I don't highly recommend. Uh, so, we can avoid. You can see as I'm coming over here now, if I wait, that one's going to go down in just a couple seconds. And so, like, that's okay. The fastest thing to do is to come over here, 
but it's it's a very narrow spot that you're trying to land on. It's very easy to fall. I don't usually do it because it, it does only save a couple of seconds, and if you fall, it loses more than a couple. Uh, the problem is you want to land only on the left side of this little projection. If you land on the right, you slip and fall. Um, for some reason, that texture right down there is a much slippier, slipperier texture than this one here. Uh, so you have to land on this side. Uh, and then, this here is also slippery with the hover boots on. I think if you walk too far to the right, you might fall. So it's just... It's it's much more likely to fail than like waiting the extra few seconds for the platform. So I tend to take the safer route. Again, your mileage may vary. If you find you're able to get uh, the faster route consistently, by all means, go for it. I don't highly recommend it. It's not like enough of a time save to justify the risk, in my opinion. Uh, just in case you missed it, there is one silver ruby under the Beemos, but you can get it just by running right past them. So the room with these crushers, this is one of the few clips that's allowed in standard. Um, and it is a little tricky at first. I think a lot of people feel like the timing is very sensitive to backflip onto the top of these. It's actually a pretty lenient timing. Uh, it's nowhere close to frame perfect. The most important thing about this jump is the position. Uh, a common beginner mistake is people try to do it right in the middle, and you're almost never going to be able to pull it off in the middle. Uh, you want to be right against the edge. You want to be here against the left or the right edge, uh, where the crusher is more narrow. And the timing for it is I'm going to jump when the, the other one lifts off the ground. When I see it, like, there, when it lifts off the ground. And it's, it's a very lenient timing, like it's not frame perfect at all. You've got like I think about half a second. There, I jumped too soon. It's fine. The other common mistake that people make is they start too far back. So there, I can't get on top of it. I'm back flipping out of the range. You need to be further forward. And it's just, you wait until you see the, the other one raise up and then you backflip, and you'll wind up on top. If you're too close to the center, you're going to get crushed. If you're too late or too early, you're going to get crushed. So the, those are the three things that can cause it to fail. Position, being too late, like there, I waited too long. Um, or I'll show you what too early looks like. Yeah, so there I just... Yeah, too soon, so it's, it's when you see the other crusher leaving the ground there so there i was like i was almost too early uh so let me know in the chat if you're getting it uh, it does take a little bit of practice to get consistent at it so we'll see what we've got up top here hey we've got a strength that has a very interesting strength can anybody anybody know why what might be interesting or kind of funny about that strength right there You can easily, without even rolling, you can make it across there. You can use the crushers to help you. Uh, with a roll, yes, that in fact logically is strength locked. Uh, so everything up here is strength locked. If there is a key up here, then everything that that key locks is also strength locked. In this case, in this case, uh, Shadow Temple is not strength locked because the only other thing up here was just some junk. Uh, but yeah, those two chests up there are the only things in Shadow that are strength locked. It's this uh, this block right here. So that logically is strength too. Even though I didn't have a strength, we know that that's a strength locked strength. Incidentally, as a backup, uh, you can use this block uh, for a ground jump. Uh, I'll show you a really easy setup for ground jump against a wall. Uh, what we're going to do is pull a bomb, drop it with a shield, crouch stab, press target, and press A. Sounds like a lot of things. It's only five things, and they all happen really fluidly. Bomb, shield, stab, stab, target, A. I forgot I had big Goron sword. You have to press sword twice. Uh, it's a little, little simpler with master sword. 
Uh, so this this is the easiest ground jump setup. Bomb, shield, stab, target, A. You got plenty of time for that, and then you can get up here like that. Bomb, shield, stab, target, A. Anywhere you have a wall, that's a that's a quick way to set up a ground jump. Only place that doesn't really work is uh, Ice Cavern. Because of the ice physics, when you do a crouch stab, it sends you further back, and then you're in you're in the wrong place for the ground jump. All right, so coming out of here comes the the part that is probably the hardest thing to learn lensless uh, for a lot of new players. This moving platform, and my advice is just go for it. Works every time. Uh, except that time. Um, I'm going to try that again. We'll pretend I got it the first time. This is a strategy that works for me 95% of the time. And so I... Whoop, you can see what I mean about it being slippery there. I'm glad I have that, uh, that fairy. I swear, I'm not usually this bad. It's the, it's the talking and playing. Alright. So my strat for this is pretty simple. We come onto here, we go up left, and aim Link's head for like around the door there. And then I'm just gonna go for it. And that's gonna work almost all the time. I'll show you the reason why. We can see we're aiming toward that door, and we're standing in this corner of the platform. That the moving platform is going to be available almost all the time, regardless of where it is. Uh, it's going to be lined up with Link's movement in that direction. So, uh, I'll come back off of here. I get onto the platform, I aim this way. And you're going to wind up on this platform, like, almost all the time. So, the the most important thing, then, is your movement when you get onto the first platform. I just do, like, an up-left kind of roll. And, yeah, you can see, like, I'm aiming, like, roughly roughly to the left of the door. And you... Whoops! There we go. Yeah, you're going to wind up on this platform most of the time. Now, with the, with the Scrub Season 3 settings, you are always going to have the Lens of Truth, and you're always going to have magic here. So, if this is something that you struggle with, if you're not, like, 100% confident, it's just a quick pause to equip the Lens and make sure that you don't waste any time here. However, in weekly races and other settings, uh, you might not always have the Lens here, and so it's, it's a good thing to be familiar with. Uh, but yeah, just, just going for it. As long as your angle is is towards like I'm aiming Link's head for like about here, uh, that's gonna work almost all the time. Uh, not as big of a deal in this season. In previous seasons, uh, sometimes you were here without the lens, even though it was logically expected. And so learning that trick was a lot more important. This time around, it, you know, you can just you can just equip the lens if you're not feeling a hundred percent confident with it. So this room has a bunch of invisible spikes. They do quarter heart damage. Not very much. I'm probably going to die here, just because I'm low on health. This is also the last check that you can do without the hookshot in logic. Uh, is the chest that spawns for killing these guys. Uh, so this chest here can be your first logical hookshot. Uh, I've seen it happen a couple of times. Uh, there is a trick we're doing a ground jump with hover boots off of this chest to grab that ledge and then from there you don't need the hook shot again it's a real pain i've never been able to get it we're not going to look at it today um that's some advanced stuff so i wouldn't worry about that uh until until let's say after the after the scrubs tournament uh then maybe maybe think about coming back and learning that trick i, I won't be touching that today uh, just for the for the silver rupee up here, uh, you want to aim for... You see there's like a weird little irregularity in the bricks. Uh, I have a hard time doing precise aiming, so I have a little setup to get me in the right position. Uh, yeah, it is it is possible to do this dungeon without a hookshot. Uh, if there's a key in this room, then it's like... It's super difficult. 
uh, you need to do that trick, I think, three or four times in order to get, um, in order to get the silver rupees, in order to get everything that you need, so. Yeah, it's not, not an entry-level trick. If you do have FW, you'll always, always, always want to leave it in this room. It's going to save you a bunch of time. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this room without it, of course. But uh, So there's a trick with a bomb chew. Uh, you want to target this edge. This edge right here. Uh, so target as you're climbing up. You pull the bomb chew, and then on the fourth flash... You release it with your shield. So, one, two, three, four, and drop. Oh, I pressed the shield, it didn't work. Uh, yeah, like, I've, I've actually never done it. I spent like 10 minutes trying to learn it once, and then I gave up. Um, it's, it's pretty precise. Uh, there's a number of things you need to do in just the right order. Um, and it is rarely relevant as well. Like, you'll almost always have a hook shot. Uh, so with this same angle, if you side hop right into the corner and then drop a bomb chew, that kills one of the keys. We can target the wall and get right into it. And that kills another one. Uh, so that's that's a nice little uh, like quick time saver. So if you're coming in here, you're gonna target this thing. You're gonna do the one, two, three, four, drop. Get yourself into the corner, shield drop a bomb chew, get into this corner, shield drop a bomb chew, and that takes care of two of the keys. The other two, you just have to shoot. Uh, they find you eventually, but uh, sometimes they're in no hurry. Uh, bow is much better than hookshot. Um, I'm not gonna not gonna hang out here for too long trying to get this guy because I do have FW in the other room. Uh, this is why FW is great here. Using Pharaoh's Wind can save you like a ton of time killing these little guys. You gonna give me some hearts? No, no hearts for me. Uh, but normally, yeah, you want to just. Um... I think this respawns. So let's see. Yes, it does. Okay. I'm going to drop FW in here, and I'll show you the, the fastest way to do this room. So we come in here. I pull the chew right away, target this as I'm climbing up, and then drop it. Oh, I think I dropped it a little soon. Two, three, drop it. And then we can come over here and look up. You can see it falling well in advance. And you know, oh, that's not a key. It's not an item. All right, I don't need it. So you can, before it even hits the ground, press FW again and get out of there. So from here, we're going to need to get onto the chest. If you have the long shot, you don't need to do this. If you just have the hook shot, you have to be on this chest. And for me, the fastest way to do it is just target this wall and backflip. You want to aim, I think it's about six bricks from the wall. Right about there. And this next room is um, a bit of a pain to do quickly. I'm going to talk you through how to go through it quickly. I'll be honest with you though, this takes practice. Uh, I remember when I first learned this strat, I probably spent like 15 or 20 minutes just doing it over and over and over until I got comfortable with it. So I don't expect to get it right the first time or the second time or maybe even the fifth time. I do say as well though, this is absolutely worth learning. Uh, so I remember like in the season one finals of the Scrubs tournament, I, I got this strat, I pulled it off and I won that match by literally five seconds uh it was and and for me like pulling off that trick which for me at the time i was like oh that was such a hard trick that was the difference you know if i if i had done this room the slow way it would have been an extra 30 seconds or whatever so it's worth learning these harder tricks it's absolutely worth it but like it it can take time so i'll show you i'll walk you through a couple of times i think actually i'm gonna die first just so that i don't die in the middle of the trick um i'll respawn with this fairy So this is the windy hallway 
uh, and it can be really, really slow to do uh, the, the intended or normal way. With a little bit of camera manipulation, though, we can make it easy. So the first step is before we even enter the room, I'm going to turn this way and side hop to the door. That sets my camera angle going into the room. Oh, I... It was starting to turn there. I'm not sure if it's still good. So you want to you wanna do that sort of all in one motion. By manipulating the camera, you actually change the time that different things spawn. I'm not sure exactly how it works. So you can get right to the wall. Three side hops. Back walk. Three side hops. Throw a nut. And then back walk with hover boots. And all of these fans are not blowing because of the camera manipulation we did at the beginning. So I'll show that again. Like I said, it's not it's not simple. You need to do things like bang, bang, bang. Everything needs to line up right. Um, it's definitely worth practicing in my in my opinion. So we set the camera. We're gonna run right to the wall. Target the wall. One, two, three. Side hops. Back walk. Cut. Oh, I might not be able to make it now. So it's it's a little lenient. Even getting hit there, I was still able to do it. And then back walk all the way through here. Uh, there are some alternatives. Some people do like a shield drop, chew, backflip, which is a lot harder than just dropping a net. You can turn and shoot the skull. Uh, it is, like I said, it's not, it's not trivial. It definitely takes some practice. Uh, but the alternative is equipping the iron boots if you have them. And getting over here. Yeah, yeah, and you don't always have the iron boots here, right? Like, it's. It's not guaranteed by any means that you're gonna have the irons. So you can see that's probably like at least twice as long. And that's with the iron boots, right? If you don't have them at all, then you've gotta wait out a couple of cycles. So, yeah, you're not able to get to the end of the hall here before the fan starts blowing. And then you gotta wait for this fan. I think it's just now's the time. But then if you're bad at aiming like me, oh no, I missed the cycle. Okay, now I gotta wait for the next cycle. So yeah, it absolutely is, in my opinion, is worthwhile to to at least learn to get it somewhat consistently, and then you can try. You know, if you fail, then okay, you haven't really lost anything. Like it's just so much slower to do it this way. So worth grinding out, but like I said, not something you're going to get the first time. So, always I want to have my, my sword drawn going through this door. The pain here is that this painting in front of you is targetable, um, and that's the thing that Link is going to target. You can, what I do is I hold up left, and then I jump slash. So first, up left, then jump slash. And it works, if you do it quickly. Um, and now you can see this guy, he's going to check out his buddy. He's not going to attack me. He doesn't care about me. He's just ignoring me. Uh, so that, like, these guys are much simpler to deal with than the Gibdos. The alternative to that, the, the quick up left, is just going to the back of the room uh, and then trying to attack them from behind. Sometimes they will scream at you, though. Uh, so hold up left, jump slash. If you press target and jump at pretty much the same time, then it won't change your angle. So I'll show you again. Even though the guys are gone, I can still do the movement. Right, so that didn't work. That didn't work. It's not it's not 100% consistent. But you can see... Like, if I'm aiming this way, I can get the jump slash that way. He'll look at the thing, but he'll jump in that direction. So holding up left, quickly pressing jump slash, that works a lot of the time. We'll come across here. We're almost done. We just got a boat ride coming up. So if you still have bomb chews and nuts equipped, uh, that's the quickest way 
to deal with that there rather than waiting for the bomb to explode. Uh, shield dropping a bomb chew and then throwing a nut. So shield drop nut. Uh, that's that's the fastest way to make an explosion. With these fellas here, you can hook shot them, and that stuns them temporarily. Then you can jump slash them with no risk of them uh, screaming at you and freezing you. Alright. So if you've been counting keys, that's all of them. That's uh, all the small keys and the boss key. Uh, and this, I find this often happens when... Uh, when you're still looking for items. And then it becomes a question, do I do the back of Shadow Temple or not? When you're in go mode, there's always a key in the back of Shadow Temple. So getting up on the boat, there's three ways to do it. Uh, the fastest is to do it like that. The problem is that's also the one that's most likely to fail. It seems like that's always the way. The fastest strat is also the riskiest strat. Uh, for, for instance, that was a little too far to the left, and so I voided out. Uh, too far to the right, you're just going to bonk the wall like that. So it's a little fiddly to get the right angle, uh, but it is definitely the fastest way to get up there. Option two. This ladder is hookshotable. Many ladders are not. Uh, so that's a little slower, but you're not going to fall into the void. Waste time that way. Option three is, of course, the block. This block requires strength. This is a really good thing to know. <laughs> I've definitely come all the way here without Zelda's lullaby and then tried to push the block and then not been able to do it. Uh, so if you are doing Shadow without ZL up to the boat, make sure you have strength. Don't forget like I did, don't be a dingus because uh, then you get all the way here and you can't push the block. Uh, but yeah, much faster just to hook shot the, hook shot the ladder or jump onto the wheel of the boat. There's a Scarecrow up here. Uh, I set free Scarecrow song just to show him off in one other one. Um, this is the most useless Scarecrow in the game, or one of them, because you actually need Longshot to reach him, and with Longshot you can also reach the skull. So he doesn't make that skull any more accessible at all. He's just completely useless. Uh, just wanted to show that off. So now time for a free boat ride for three. We're just gonna sit back, relax, have some fun on the boat. It's a long boat ride, it's a long cutscene. And drink some water. So you probably know there's a safe spot on the boat. Don't run too fast, you might fall off. Just inch your way to the back, but it's a pretty lenient spot. You can stand back here and they just eventually, sometimes quickly, sometimes after a while, they just walk right off. Let's see how fast it takes this guy to get out of here. Yeah, he's gone. So, I'm just going to pause for a second. So there's there's three ways to knock down this statue coming up here. The one with the bomb flowers all around it. You can shoot it from the boat. You have to watch the whole cutscene. But the boat continues to move you towards the, the back of Shadow Maze. So it's not like a huge waste of time. Also, when you come out of the maze, you can shoot it and jump slash into the void. That skips the cutscene, uh, so it's a little bit faster. And then also you can uh, use Scarecrow Song if you have Long Shot. Uh, you can spawn a Scarecrow and get across. I think that technically that one is the fastest if you happen to have everything set up for it. So I'm going to show all three of those as well as a not in logic option to use Bomb Chews. Uh, I can only knock the statue down once though. Um, so I'll knock it down now. Uh, but anytime you hit any of the bomb flowers around it, it gets knocked down. So just, just for the purposes of illustration of knocking it down from the boat, uh, I don't want to take the boat ride again, so I'm just going to do it now. Uh, so you can just spam arrows in that general direction, and eventually one of them is going to hit. 
Yeah, I should learn how to save state. I've never gotten around to figuring that out. Uh, so, you can see the boat has continued. Now we're sinking. So that's that's one option. I prefer not to do that that way, but it's it's good to have options. If you find that that's faster or more consistent for you, go for it. Uh, so from here... So the maze here is, is not a complicated maze. If you find yourself getting confused or lost in here, I recommend just running through it four or five times. You'll get the hang of it real quick. Hey buddy, you're on the wrong side of the wall. I can still hit you somehow. Uh, so we want to go two posts to the left, two posts on the right, and then hook back. Uh, so, super simple. I walk past these two posts and turn left. I walk past these two posts and turn right. If you are playing a category with fire arrow entry, this is the scary part of fire arrow entry because you can't uh, get these, you can't destroy this wall with anything but this fire. Uh, we can kill one of these guys. You don't need to kill both. The other one is absolutely no threat to you. Gosh, we'll get right in his face. Hey buddy, you gonna attack me? Huh? 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 No. He's not gonna attack you, he's gonna go and try to help his friend. So, you don't need to, to waste your time killing the other one. A little bit of health to bring us into the bongo fight there. There is a trick uh, to get frozen by the re-dead and then you wind up on the other side of the wall. I don't know if it works on both sides. I know it's relevant... Oh, I, I forgot to explain the, the way through the maze. I know it's relevant in vanilla bingo to get the boss key. Um, so again, two on the left, two on the right, and then from here we can either go over there and grab the skull, or we can go over here and kill this thing. Uh, yeah, that trick is not allowed in standard, but I guess if you're playing a category that allows fire arrow entry, it might be allowed. With a quick spin, sometimes you can get all of these things. I usually miss. I don't know, maybe I'm standing in the wrong place. Uh, but Dim Spire kills them all, so... And you have it equipped from the last room anyway, so... I try the quick spin. If it fails, I use Dim's Fire. Uh, you don't want to let them run around and, and go back to their full size, because then, like, they'll choke you. It's, it's a big waste of time. Uh, so, the quick jump slash. I charge a quick spin. A quick spin, if it doesn't get them all, then Dim Spire will do it. Yeah, I guess it's not relevant in standard, um, the trick for going through that wall, because you're always going to have Din's Fire there, uh, but it's, it's not allowed. Um, so you, you do need to use Din's Fire to get those two chests. Coming out of the maze, you actually have two options here. We can go this way, and then in, or like there's an alternative path, the one I usually take. I actually don't know which one is faster. Uh, oh my god, I'm getting bodied by these guys. Up and over and out. Either of those works. Uh, this, yeah, this maze is just a matter of getting comfortable with it. Uh, walk around, have some fun with it. Um, so yeah, I mentioned there's some other options here for knocking down the statue. There's a scarecrow up there. Uh, he's only reachable with long shot. So if you have the long shot, I think that's technically the fastest way to get across. Uh, we can also... Can I hit the bomb flowers from here? Or are they all gone? I think they're all gone now. Well, so what you would do is aim for the bomb flower, shoot, and then side hop. It starts the cutscene, and then the rest of the cutscene gets skipped. Uh, so that's, I think, faster than shooting it from the boat. There's also an option to use bomb shoes. I really like this strat. It doesn't come up very often, only if you don't have a bow. Uh, but it sucks to come all the way here without a bow, and then you've got to ride the boat again. Uh, so it's it's good to have this in the back of your mind. It's a super easy strat. The, the hardest part is finding the place to do it. Uh, so to get the angle, what we're going to do is we're going to charge uh, a magic spin, and then while Link is spinning, just hold shield. So that changes his angle very slightly. We can see, all right, I'm flush with the wall. Charge, spin, hold shield. All right, now I'm like a little bit further to the right. And that gives us the angle that we want uh, for the bomb shoot. We want to do it from a specific position as well. 
So see this weird, irregular sort of shape in the bricks? I'm gonna stand just to the right of it, right about here. Uh, charge the spam, hold shield, so that changes the angle. One side up right, and then shield drop the bomb shield. You see him come around and blow up those bombs. It's super easy to do. Um, it's just, it's not as easy to remember because it doesn't come up very often. Uh, I'll show you though, if you're too far in this direction, the bomb chew is going to go up the wall. If you see it going up at any angle, you know you've got it wrong. So you can just come back and try again. You want to be again, like just a little to the right of this thing. If you see it going down, you're good. If you see it going up, you missed. And then that'll blow that up and knock down that statue. All right, almost to the end. I'm gonna drop Pharaoh's Wind in this last room here. And save, because I want to do Bongo once with Master Sword, um, and once with... Oh, I'm gonna need to save again. Once with Master Sword, once with Big Goron Sword. So getting through this room is pretty easy. Forward, up left. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty trivial to get through. Uh, you have the lens of truth at all times for this tournament, so if it gives you trouble, that's fine. But like, I can even do it backwards without looking. So forwards, and then up left. It's just a little off-center. Here, I can show you what we're looking at. Whoa. So there's this T-shaped platform here, so you get on it, move toward the upper left part of it, and then get onto this platform here, which is, uh, like, pretty, pretty available. We'll see with the, with the lens the whole time. Yeah, so you can see you're going this way, up left, get you here, and then over to this one. That's all there is to that. Okay, time for Bongo. So let's do it first with the uh, the big Goron sword because it's a little bit easier. Um, you're always going to want to jump slash into this fight, and then after the cutscene, uh, you're going to be bouncing in midair. I like to hold down while Link is in midair and then let go right before he lands. I'm just trying to explain now because things will move kind of fast. Uh, so by doing that, you stay facing Bongo. So uh, the cutscene ends. They'll bounce you into midair. Hold down in midair. He won't turn around, and then let it go before he lands. You'll stay facing the hands, and you can target them and shoot at them. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But you always want to, yeah, jump slash into this fight, store that power crouch stab. So there, I held down. And that kept me facing the right direction. I'm not sure how it works. The punch attack is the worst one. It's the one you don't want to see. Uh, I'm not shooting at him right now because I want to try to get another punch attack to show what, uh, what you do in that situation. All right, so the other ones come back to life. If you're not fast enough, they will come back to life. Come on, punch me, man. He doesn't want to punch. There we go. Yeah. Okay, and I, I messed it up. Basically, you just want to try to side pop out of the way. Any other attack, you can shoot. So Bongo's coming, and I'm going to try to advance it little by little. About here, when you, the hands are just out of the frame, that's when you want to release uh, the, the bow. And then we just crouch that. Uh, with, with Big Goron Sword, it's really easy to get the one cycle. Uh, you just mash. The hardest thing is shooting at the right time to get the eye. A lot of people will shoot either too soon, and then he's far away, you gotta run to him. Uh, you don't maybe have enough time to get all your crouch stabs in. Or they'll shoot too late, and they won't hit him because he's already hit you in the face and knocked you off the platform. So we'll, we'll look at that again. Uh, shoot him in the eye one more time. And we'll do it with the Master Sword this time. 
So jump slashing into the fight, stores the power crouch stab. And I'm holding down. I let go now. Uh, I let go too soon. So they start spinning around, they're going everywhere, who knows where they are. If this happens to you, the best thing to do is to come out to the edge. Their bounces affect you less here, so you spend more time on the ground. So if you're having a hard time getting control of the situation, come into the edge of the drum. That lets you target them, and they're bouncing you a lot less. So I want to hit them about now. Oh no, I was too late. That's okay. We can see from the edge. It's much easier to target them. And you want to be aimed a little up. Oh, I didn't get the one cycle. It is possible to get a one cycle with the Master Sword. It's tough. There's a precise timing to it. Um, I've heard it recommended that you sing She Loves You by the Beatles or Super Califragilistic Expialidocious. I was, I was two crouch stabs off. If you hit them with the right rhythm, it keeps them stun locked. So it's like Super Califragilistic Expialidocious. Uh, I, I don't know, I get it maybe like one time in 20. Like, it's it's a pretty precise thing to do. So, uh, so that's Bongo. Any questions about Bongo in particular? Anything else in the temple? Anything you'd like me to go over again before we wrap up the stream for today? I will remind folks as well that this is the first in a series. Um, I'm planning next week to do uh, a stream all about the Fire Temple. Uh, the following week we're going to look at Trials plus the Ganondorf and Ganon fight. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be... I've been recording this. I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel and I'll put uh, I'll put the link in the Scrubs Discord so if you want to refer back to any of the sections. Uh, and yeah, if, if you do have any questions um, after the stream, by all means send me a DM about it. Uh, I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, yeah, so next week, Fire, the week after Trials, and then the week before the tournament starts, I'm going to do a big uh, overworld tricks. We're going to look at uh, Wasteland forward and backwards, King Zora skip, a uh, bunch of little things here and there, both as child and adult. Uh, so I hope I hope this has been helpful for people. Um, yeah, it's that's what this community is all about. It's about like supporting people who are new to it, helping them get into it. Like, Everything I have learned about this game, I've learned from other people, right? So, like, it's it's not the type of community where people are hoarding their strategies. Uh, this is my secret way of doing this. Like, uh, it's a game that we all enjoy and we love to play, and it's it's great to see new people getting into it. And uh, I love I love the Scrubs community for how it encourages people for getting into this. So, thanks for hanging out today. I hope this has been helpful for people. Um, again, I'll post this on YouTube. Check back in the Discord for the link, and uh, hopefully, I'll see some of you folks next week. Take care. Have a good afternoon.